This is the Serco Group. They run all seven immigration detention centres in Australia, but they do lots more. In fact, they're probably the biggest company you've never heard of. Governments all around the world outsource to Serco. They run half of London's traffic lights, all of Dublin's, and in Ontario, Canada, they test you for your driver's licence. Serco are also the largest air traffic controllers in the world. They've got 54 towers in the US, and they control Baghdad's air traffic. They even maintain the RAF squadron the Queen flies on. All over the planet, Serco are moving people, from metros in Dubai to buses in Adelaide. And they're good at stopping people from moving too. Serco will soon be the largest operator of private prisons in the UK, and they're very efficient at it. In one prison, they increase capacity by 20%, simply by putting beds in the toilets. In another Serco prison, a 14-year-old hanged himself after being assaulted by Serco guards, the UK's youngest ever death in custody. But don't think Serco aren't good with kids. In Bradford, they run all the state schools in the district. Serco is the model of a modern multinational, and that's why they're the right company to keep us safe. They've been running the UK's ballistic missile defence system ever since it was outsourced 40 years ago. In fact, they look after Britain's entire nuclear arsenal, from creation to decommissioning. But wait, there's more. Serco are so good at running things, they even run time itself. That's right, Serco have the contract for setting Greenwich Mean Time. And Serco just keep getting bigger. Since 1994, they've grown by 1,200%. How have they been so successful? CEO Chris Hyman puts his success with Serco down to listening to God. Now, you might think things like nuclear arsenals and border protection are best handled by the government, but that's not a problem for Serco because about 85% of their workforce are ex-public servants. So they have all the training and connections necessary to handle big government contracts. In Australia, Serco have a presence on every military base, run every immigration detention centre, two prisons, cross-country trains like the Indian Pacific and the GAN, and they're bidding on more contracts right now, including one to run prisons across New South Wales. So, even if you don't know their name, chances are you're caught in their web. Serco, bringing service to life. Public services are overseen by government and they're paid for by taxes. Traditionally, they're run by civil servants, but increasingly, they're being tendered out to private companies. One of the biggest of those companies is Serco, although there are loads of them, including G4S and Capita. Now, Serco is everywhere. If there's a government department for it, there's probably a Serco service for it, except Serco call them markets. But let's try and give you a sense of the scale of this thing. Serco does everything from training helicopter pilots and national security personnel to managing naval bases, transporting people and munitions, to providing logistical support, to maintaining military aircraft. They also manage the UK Atomic Weapons Establishment with Lockheed Martin and Jacobs. They maintain the Trident system and developing materials for it. They also run the anti-ballistic missile warning system, nuclear waste management, nuclear safety program, and they inspect nuclear plants. Their space and security specialists support Skynet 5, the UK military's secure satellite communications network, and they're involved at RAF Menwith Hill, the secretive signals intelligence gathering centre that's thought to be involved in GCHQ's Tempora Dragnet project. So it could be that they're helping the government collect data on you. Outside of defence, they manage prisons, they run electronic tagging systems, prisoner transportation, they run immigration centres, community payback programmes, Serco are involved in refuse and recycling, street cleaning, vehicle maintenance, they have occupational health services, out of hour health services, prison health services and more. They design, built and maintain Boris bikes for Transport for London. They have 70 leisure facilities, scientific research facilities, transport facilities, welfare programmes designed to get people back into work, and they set Greenwich Mean Time. And they're the world's largest air traffic controller. And there's a hell of a lot more, but lists get boring. Now back in 2009, Serco CEO Chris Hyman told The Telegraph, the state sets policy, we only do implementation and management. If we started setting policy, I would be worried. Now they still don't set policy, but there might be other reasons to be concerned. And these are just some of the problems that have cropped up recently. 
The government themselves have referred Serco to the Serious Fraud Office, alongside G4S, for overcharging on their electronic tagging contract. And it's not a small amount. They're accused of charging tens of millions of pounds too much. It's alleged that one in six tags didn't even exist. In Bradford, they were running the state school system for 10 years, but the regional head of the National Union of Teachers accused them of breaking contractual promises and offering very poor value for money. But they earned a reported £5 million in bonuses at the end of the contract. In Cornwall, they run an out-of-hours doctor's service, which MPs said wasn't good enough and didn't provide enough staff and failed to meet national quality requirements. And the problems in Cornwall only came to light after whistleblowers revealed Serco staffers were falsifying data to make it appear like they were performing better than they were. In response, Serco went through the employees' lockers to try and identify who leaked the information. That led to accusations that the company was bullying its staff, but they still have the contract. Then there are the community health services in Suffolk, which have been run by Serco since October last year. Already there are accusations that new staff are getting less pay, fewer days holiday and less sick pay. Allegations that the care is getting worse and that the staff are having to work longer hours. Serco says that all of their staff in Suffolk are on standard contracts, but in 2011 their CEO Chris Hyman reportedly earned just under £2 million. And it doesn't end there either. In the prisons, inmates have been found being forced to sleep in toilets during more than one inspection. And at their Thameside prison in Belmarsh, the inspectors found that 60% of prisoners were locked in cells for 24 hours a day. Margaret Hodge, the MP who chairs the Public Accounts Committee, told The Guardian that the government is incapable of protecting taxpayers while it outsources. She's also said that many of these public service companies are great at winning contracts, but not at delivering them. Now, Serco themselves say that they're improving services in Cornwall and that they've implemented new systems at the prison in Thameside. The CEO also says that they won't tolerate poor practice or behaviour. Now, if you thought Serco were just a British company, you're wrong. They operate in North America, Australia, Asia Pacific, India, Europe and the Middle East. They're truly a global operation and they operate in a dizzying amount of industries and their speciality is soaking up public service contracts. In the United States, just as one example, they have employees working at the NSA along with dozens of other defence departments. Now many people haven't even heard of Serco, but unlike most companies, that isn't a problem for them. The CEO, Chris Simon, once said this, we are delighted when the public knows who we are, but really, we need to be known by the people who make decisions. And maybe that's just the point. If taxpayers knew exactly how much of their money they were paying for public services actually went to private companies and private salaries, then maybe they might be a bit more concerned about who was running them.